Sue and Trevor, we can't hear you. Could you unmute, please? Good morning. My name is Judy Morris and I'd like to welcome you to our service for Passion Sunday, brought to you from the churches of Clanes and St George's in Worcester, in the Diocese of Worcester, UK. It's really good that you could join with us, whether this morning or later on, catching up on Facebook or YouTube. We hope that you'll be blessed by our worship this morning and God will speak to you in your heart. I'd like to turn now to Jan Keir, one of our other readers, and Phil, who are now going to lead our opening prayers. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. And also with you. Gracious Father, you gave up your son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to sing how deep the Father's love for us, which will be led by Sue and Trevor. So over to Sue and Trevor. Oh, deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face away As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Behold that man upon a cross my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there. 
until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Thank you, Sue and Trevor. I'm sure many of you are looking forward to our next item, which is the creating of our next stage of the Lent Garden, where Joe has already recorded it and is ready to share it with us now. Hello everyone, welcome back. How are you getting on with your Lent Gardens? Thank you for sending me all the photographs. One little girl sent me a video this week, which was wonderful. Today, we're going to plant seeds. If you received a Lent pack, there'll be a little packet of them, like this, inside your Lent pack with some seeds. I don't know what's in them. So you might like to open those ready. If you haven't got those, it doesn't matter. Just find some seeds anywhere. Even bird seed would do. I've got some peas. I was going to use these to talk to you because they're a bit bigger and they're easier to see. Seeds are like little tiny miracles. If you do nothing with them, if you just leave them in the packets, they'll just stay like seeds forever and ever. But if you put your seeds, I'm just going to put a few in my hand now. If you put, here's my peak seeds. If you put your seeds inside the soil, push them in like that, and then cover them up with a bit of soil, and then give them a water, I'm going to spray mine. If you give them some water, something amazing happens. The little seeds begin to grow and they change. And eventually they grow into big plants and they make their own seeds. How amazing is that? But what happens to the original seed? If I was to dig that one up after it's grown, I wonder what would happen to it. I think I wouldn't be able to find it. I don't think I'd be able to find it at all. Jesus liked to talk about seeds and sowing. One day when he was talking to people, he said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it won't produce anything. I wonder what he meant. Where does the seed go after it has started growing? If you look, you might find the empty shell, just the husk. But it's like the actual seed has to be prepared to give up being a seed. It has to let go of itself in order for new life to grow. Well, we're going to sow our seeds now. So open your packet carefully. Look at your garden and think about where you're going to plant them. I'm not going to plant mine in those stony bits there. These stony bits here. I'm going to choose this bit here and all round there. And I've actually already watered it. I'm just going to sprinkle like that. 
and that and sprinkle and sprinkle and put them all over there and I'm just going to give them a little push down like that push them into the soil and then I'm going to give them a good water oh this is why it's good to use a spray because they even with a the spray they fly about make sure you keep them watered all week won't you see how many days it takes you'll have to put that with your photographs how many days does it take for your seed to grow and don't forget to send me your photographs so we can all see how you're getting on and now peace be with you bye bye See you next week. Bye, Joe. That was lovely, wasn't it? I'm um, sure we all look forward to seeing how well things have grown in the, in the week ahead. And now we go to Gwen for our reading from Hebrews. A reading from the fifth chapter of the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest is a man chosen to represent other people in their dealings with God. He presents their gifts to God and offers sacrifices for their sins. And he is able to deal gently with ignorant and wayward people because he himself is subject to the same weaknesses. That is why he must offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as theirs. And no one can become a high priest simply because he wants such an honour. He must be called by God for this work, just as Aaron was. That is why Christ did not honour himself as assuming he could become a high priest. No, he was chosen by God who said to him, you are my son. Today I have become your father. And at another place, God said to him, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. While Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from death. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Even though Jesus was God's son, he learnt obedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as perfect high priest, and he became the source of eternal salvation for those who obey him. And God designated him to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Gwen. It was beautifully read. And now we turn to Sue and Trevor for another song to lead us in our worship. The beautiful one, Such Love. Such love, pure as the whitest snow, such love, weeps for the shame I know, such love, paying the debt I owe, oh Jesus, such love, such love, stilling my restlessness, such love, filling my emptiness, such love. 
showing me holiness. Oh, Jesus, such love. Such love springs from eternity. Such love streaming through history, such love, fountain of life to me, oh Jesus, such love. Thank you, Sue and Trevor. And now our gospel reading for Mike Josie. The gospel reading this morning is from John and I'm reading from the message. Should you be following it, the words may be slightly different. There were some Greeks in town who had come up to worship at the feast. They approached Philip who was from Bethsaida in Galilee Sir, we want to see Jesus. Can you help us? Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip together told Jesus. Jesus answered, Time's up. The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and re reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life, just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. If any of you wants to serve me, then follow me. Then you'll be where I am, ready to serve at a moment's notice. But the Father will honour and reward anyone who serves me. Right now, I'm storm-tossed. And what am I going to say? Father, get me out of this. No, this is why I came in the first place. I'll say, Father, put your glory on display. A voice came out of the sky. I have glorified it, and I'll glorify it again. The crowd, listening crowd said, Thunder, others said, an angel spoke to him. Jesus said, the voice didn't come for me, but for you. At this moment, the world is in crisis. Now Satan, the ruler of this world, will be thrown out. And I, as I am lifted up from the earth, will attract everyone to me and gather them around me. He put it this way to show how he was going to be put to death. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for that reading, Mike. Today's Gospel seems slightly out of place. It comes after our Lord's triumphal entry, but we don't celebrate that until next Sunday, Palm Sunday. And when we get into the real nitty gritty of the passage, it has some of Jesus' proverbial sayings that really do need to be unpacked. All in all, it is a really tightly packed passage. So how do we get inside a passage like this? Well, for a start off, that's the wrong question. How do we let our, wor our Lord's words seep into our DNA and become part of us? Well, unlike uh, Michel of uh, the Resistance in the TV sitcom Allo Allo, listen carefully, I will say this only once, I'll keep on saying it. It's this. Wherever we are in John's Gospel, always have the prologue in fo focus. Chapter one, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. 
the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it and so on through till verse 18 of that chapter. Wherever you are in John's gospel, always keep the prologue in very sharp focus. On a human level, Jesus is facing an intense human conflict. Just before today's gospel, Jesus' close friend Lazarus had died and been buried. But Jesus wasn't there. And Lazarus's sister, Martha, upbraided Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus replied to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And Jesus asks Martha, do you believe this? And Jesus went to Lazarus's tomb and raised him from the dead. Now, you would have thought that everyone would have gathered around Jesus to support and follow him. Well, some did. Uh, but the religious leadership, with a few exceptions, thought otherwise. This Jesus was competition. Best kill him. That's where today's gospel starts. The passage comes in three brief parts. Firstly, the Greeks who were in Jerusalem for the great Jewish feast of the Passover. Amongst them undoubtedly were Greek nationals, but the word here includes non-Jews who hadn't yet converted. It's hardly surprising that there might be a queue of people wanting to see Jesus. After all, he had just raised Lazarus from the dead and the whole place was abuzz with the news. These people were honest God-fearers, people whose hearts and minds were already receptive to the one true God, the creator of the cosmos, and the only one from whom comes life-giving salvation that we had in the prologue I mentioned a moment ago. The Greeks sought Jesus. It was not the other way around. In John's gospel, people are drawn to Jesus. That begs a question. How recognizable are we as followers of Jesus? Are we in the right places even to be found? Or is our Christian presence hardly visible to others seeking Jesus? The passage doesn't say whether Jesus actually meets this group. Instead, secondly, it goes on to tell some <clears throat> rather oblique sayings of Jesus. Jesus announces that the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. <clears throat> Jesus speaks of the hour seven times in this gospel. The number seven is very significant, the divine number of completion. The first time at the wedding feast at Cana, he told his mother Mary that his hour had not yet come. Now it has. Jesus is to be glorified. Not the glorification of a majestic coronation, of people bowing before him in tribute and worship. <clears throat> no, glorification through being mocked, flogged, of being lifted up on a cross, of a shameful death. Jesus emphasizes it. We see at the start of verse 24 in the message translation that Mike read, it says, listen carefully, listen carefully. Other translations have, very truly, I tell you, or you might see, amen, amen, I say to you. Amen is an Aramaic word, the language that Jesus used. In John's gospel, this saying occurs 25 times and 50 times in the other three gospels. It is a key saying. It's about the importance of truth. Here, the inescapable truth is that Jesus was glorified in suffering and in death. What a contradiction. Glory, death. But without death, there could be no life. If a farmer leaves his sack of seed in the barn, there's no harvest. To all intents and purposes, the seeds are dead. The farmer has to drill the seed in the soil to reap a harvest. That's the picture Jesus paints here. That's the picture that Joe painted with the little Easter garden. Without the seed of Jesus' death, 
there could be no resurrection and ascending to eternal life. Without the darkness of Jesus' passion and his death, his going into the ground, there would be no promise, no hope that we receive the gift of eternal life from him. And so Jesus uses this picture, the dead seed germinating to produce a rich harvest, vastly multiplied from the single seed sown. To be part of this rich harvest, Jesus describes needing to let go, metaphorically letting die whatever impedes us following Jesus, the cost of following Jesus, serving Jesus. That is the inevitable and sharp contrast between going our own way or following Jesus. When we follow Jesus, we die to self and find our home in the Father's love. So to the third part of this gospel passage, those around Jesus, his disciples, listeners, and I assume the Greeks who wanted to see Jesus, now witness the full weight of Jesus' enveloping passion. Jesus' words that we heard from the message translation, right now I am shaken. And what am I going to say? Father, get me out of this? No. This is why I came in the first place. I'll say, Father, put your glory on display. A voice came out of the sky. I have glorified it and I'll glorify it again. Jesus answers his own question why he should go through the ordeal that awaits him, not to save himself, but glorify his heavenly father. After the last prophets of the Hebrew scriptures, our Old Testament, the voice of God was no longer to be heard until Messiah came. And twice already in Jesus' life, the voice of God was heard at Jesus' baptism and then at the transfiguration. And now God's voice for the third time, Messiah had come. Some said the sound was thunder. To those present, thunder would have signified judgment. But this time the judgment being uttered was the judgment of the world, the ruler of the world. All that stood before, all that stood then and stands now against God's purposes. All that seeks to slam shut the gate to God's love. This judgment was heralded by Jesus being lifted up lifted up to his cross, lifted up to die. It is through the cross alone that can anyone find Jesus. There is no other way. Amen. Now, if this has prompted questions in your own mind and you want to find out more, at the end of the service, there will be a slide saying how to get in touch. Please do if that's you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. A very moving words that you've shared with us this morning. We pray that they've spoken to people's hearts. And now we are led to the cross in the song, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, to the lovely folk tune, Whaley Whaley. Thank you, Sue and Trevor. <laughs> When I survey, survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died, my riches gain, I count but loss and poor content. On all my pride Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast Save in the death of Christ my God
songs that charm me most, I sacrifice them through his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love. such love and sorrow meet all thorns compose so rich a crown were the whole realm of nature mine that were a broad far too small love so amazing so divine demands my soul my life my now a time of prayer. The Collect for Passion Tide. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Fellow travellers of Christ's way, let us pray together for the church and for the world. Father, may our Christian witness in a confused and nervous world share with a piercing integrity and warmth, that shine with a piercing integrity and warmth that awakens people's hearts to the love of their Creator. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as our Lenten journey draws us nearer towards Calvary and Easter, we pray for the life teaching and fellowship of your church throughout the world. We pray for all your ministers that they may faithfully continue to fulfil their vocation in supporting and guiding your people in imaginative ways whilst church buildings are closed or only available for major festivals. For all your people who miss the comfort of common worship, and especially those who are persecuted for their faith, those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, and those who are seeking it, breathe new life into your church, that we may have the courage to continue to proclaim Jesus as the resurrection and the light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for clear light and guidance as our troubled world faces the problems and crisis of another week. For the willingness of leaders to be wisely advised and courageous in doing what is right. As the media concentrate almost solely on the current pandemic, let us not forget that the world which you gave us has many other problems of our making. Loving Father, we bring to you the struggles of those who suffer from civil war and strife, from disease, hunger and even lack of clean water. We especially pray for today for the people of Ethiopia, Afghanistan, Democratic Republic of Congo, Syria and the Yemen, in the Yemen where there is unrelenting conflict and famine. famine. We are shocked and appalled and pray that any money raised will be used for irrigation, for food and not for weapons. Let us all give generously to the aid agencies who do such amazing work to help people 
in such great need. We also pray for the people of Myanmar as they hope for democratic government and for the people of Russia where just attending an opposition meeting can lead to prison. We give thanks for our freedoms. We pray for Australia as it suffers the worst flooding in a hundred years. We pray for all homeless people in this land of ours. God through Christ has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We are all ambassadors for Christ. Help us to understand true compassion and love for our neighbour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we ask you to accept our thanks for the unstinting labours of all health and care workers, our emergency services, those who produce and distribute our food, including supermarket and other shop workers, and those who keep our public services going, generously risking their own health and safety. We also give thanks for the scientists who continue to seek to develop cures and who have worked together internationally and succeeded in producing vaccines to fight COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for our local community. Wherever homes are disturbed by financial problems, difficult relationships, and long-term illness, we pray for guidance and support. We pray for our families and our friends with all the hopes, fears, problems and needs. But loving God, we praise you for inspiring a renewed sense of community and for the upsurge in neighbour supporting neighbour. Grant that this new spirit may continue when the current dangers have passed, that the world may be a more loving and peaceful place. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray for those in the darkness and fear of sickness. Heal all your children who are weary in body, mind and spirit. Comfort those who are alone deprived, rejected or helpless, especially those on our hearts today because of their particular need. And we remember all those mentioned in our newsletter. Sometimes, loving God, we do not know how or are unable to help others accept our silent care for them through prayer and our trust in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, into your hands we commit those who have run the race and kept the faith, even if that faith was known only to you and now have gone to their reward. May your light shine upon them forever and our lives be richer because of their memory. And we remember today all those mentioned in our weekly newsletter. Grant us, with all who have known you in their hearts, a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now we are going to go over to Gwen, who is going to say and sign the Lord's Prayer for us, and afterwards Judy will lead us in the peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Gwen. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace. Just wave as well if you just like. And if you're a couple together, you are allowed to kiss. Thank you. And now uh, we have any ref uh, notices. Our main one this morning is the day of reflection, which is happening on, on Tuesday. It's the, can we believe it's a year since we all started to go into lockdown? I don't think we'll ever forget that occasion, uh, but this is a time of reflection. Oh, thanks for those who've sacrificed so much and of remembering those whose lives have been lost and whose, whose health has been permanently damaged. So both churches will be open 12 to 2 on Tuesday. Uh, there will be yellow ribbons there, I think, to tie around or bring your own perhaps tie a ribbon in on your front door handle or somewhere else we want to get the message out there that uh, we're all thinking and praying and remembering together on easter sunday remember we will be together in person to worship in our both our churches at 10 30 and so zoom will be moving to the afternoon on that day it will all be in the e-newsletter so please watch out for that and if you want to come to a service you do need to book so we can make sure everyone is safely spaced. So thank you for your presence with us this morning and uh, we'll now turn to our final song which is 200, 704, sorry I'm, sorry, I'm saying the number it's written down. <laughs> there is a redeemer. Oh sorry they want to mention the gardens so don't forget to send your images in to Facebook. Does Joe want us to watch this one? Yeah, I just um, I just would love everyone to watch this little girl's video of her garden. You have to listen carefully because she actually pretends to be the little sheep. <laughs> I need a clean. <laughs> Thank you, that was lovely. <laughs> there is a redeemer. Over to Sue and Trevor. There is a redeemer, Jesus God's own son, precious lamb of God, Messiah, oh. giving us your son and leaving your spirit till the work on earth is done jesus my redeemer name above 
of all names, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, all for sinners slain. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. When I stand in glory, I will see his face, and there I serve my King forever in that holy place. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Thank you, Sue and Trevor, for leading our worship in song today. It's been very, very helpful to us. Thank you to Rev Peter for sharing his word and for all those, Phil and Jan and Gwen, all those who took part in the service. And a big thanks for those we don't really notice, but those of us who lead worship are very grateful for our church hosts, our drivers, who make all the technical things get sorted out amazingly. So it's been a wonderful service this morning. I think you'll agree. And we've been to the cross. We've met with Jesus. We've understood the wonders of his crucifixion. And soon, so soon, we will draw near to his resurrection. I hope that is true in your life as well as in the church's year. And now for our blessing. Could you have the slide, please? Thank you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the courage to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we say goodbye to our friends on Facebook. And shortly we'll be unmuted.